I'd like to say good evening to you. We greet you in the marvelous and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a mighty God we serve. We truly give honor to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Truly for just making a way for us, waking us up, and starting us on our way. And not only that, we thank the Lord for saving our soul. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I am the redeemed. Amen. The redeemed. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And truly we come um, thanking the Lord for the fact that he has delivered us out of darkness and placed us into the marvelous light. We want to greet you this evening, Wednesday night Bible study. A time for us to get built back up in the faith and grow up in the things of the Lord and look more like Jesus. That's what um, Bible study is for, for the believer, uh, so that we can have an intimacy with Christ, um, grow up in the things of the Lord, and be able, watch this, to defeat the, the wiles of the devil, to defeat the, the movement of the devil in, in the world and all the things that's trying to pull us away from godliness. Amen. So Bible study is so key. So welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, we're back online. Uh, looking at some great topics that the Lord has for us to challenge us in um, on these weeks to come for Wednesday night. Let's open up with a short word of prayer. Father, we come to honor you. We bless you. We magnify your holy and righteous name. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. Uh, you are truly the ancient of days. You're the one who's faithful and true. You're the creator of heaven and earth, and we just thank you, Lord God, for this day and what you have made for us, oh God. We thank you for Jesus and the blood of Christ that has cleansed us from all sin, the forgiveness of sin. Father God, we thank you for the fact that you have made us brand new creations um, through your son, Jesus Christ. Now we pray that you, God, Holy Spirit, illuminate our hearts and our minds, uh, take us deep into the treasures of your word that we may learn to do, oh God. Uh, not just be hearers, but doers of your word. We thank you. We magnify. We pray for those in Syria and Turkey that are still battling with the devastation of the earthquake. We pray for your mercy and your grace upon these folks, Lord God. Show yourself strong over there, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's get started. A man by the name of Billy Norris, he, he, he wrote a... a, a I guess a little, um, uh, I don't know what to say, um, maybe he, it was like a, for this gospel press, like gospel guide, he wrote um, a little um, story, I should say, um, about a tragic event of two young men. I want you to grab this story because it opens up into our lesson today. Um, a, tra a tragic event of two young men uh, as a result of drifting. Amen. This is what Billy Norris wrote. He said, two young men were fishing above a low dam on a river near their hometown. And as they were concentrating on catching fish, they were unaware that they had drifted until they were not far from the water flowing over the dam. He goes on to say, when they realized their situation, the current near the dam had become too powerful for them to keep their boat from going over. And below the dam, the water was dashing with the strong force over great boulders and through crevices in the rocks. And caught by the swirling waters under the rocks, they never came to the surface. After days of relentless searching, the divers finally found one body, and then two or three days later, the other. Tragic story that uh, this man penned Billy Norris, uh, it, but he's giving us an illustration about the danger, which is our lesson today, the danger of drifting, amen, the danger of drifting, amen. We see it in the story with these two young men. The danger of drifting um, class is not limited to the, just to the physical realm, but sadly, it, it's, a, it's a common thing in the Christian realm, drifting, amen. Drifting away from the things of the Lord, drifting away from Christ, drifting away from the word of God, just drifting away from fellowship, drifting away from spirituality. In all reality, it's something that is now worked this way even in Christendom. Amen. And the drift, as we've seen with these young men, it led to a destruction. But watch this. Drifting can lead to a destruction. And so today, as we look at this, our lesson today that we need to, to learn from and glean from and we need to do some intro inspection in our own hearts, 
Amen. Some intro inspection of our own hearts. Our lesson today is the danger of drifting. The danger of drifting. These young men were unaware that they had drifted away. Amen. The current had taken them away that they went over the dam. Amen. And, and the danger of drifting is real even for the child of God. Even for you and I, the danger of drifting is real. Amen. It's something that is real. And so what we want to do today as we enter our Wednesday night Bible study, let's stimulate on some careful intro inspection regarding the danger of drifting amen because watch this we're all prone to drift we're all prone to wonder amen and and we're talking about not just any old drifting amen we're talking about drifting away watch this from the lord jesus christ you say i would never drift away oh no uh, it's a possibility that we may have already drifted away we're talking about drifting away from the Lord Jesus Christ class on this Wednesday night class. Uh, the potential of us drifting away, it's right there on the table, amen? And so watch, watch this, let's look at this. It's a possibility that you can be drifting and not be aware of it, amen? It's a possibility that you could be drifting and not be aware of it, not until you find yourself, watch this, you find yourself far from the peaceful shore. I remember one time uh, we was at the beach and, and, and the undercurrent of the water, we didn't even know it, it was taking us out, amen? It was taking us out into the, into the sea. If you're not um, aware of it, amen, if you're not swimming or whatever, you can find yourself being drifted out to sea, amen, because of the undercurrent. And it's the same thing in this spiritual life, amen? You can find yourself adrift. You can find yourself far from the peaceful shore. You can find yourself, even though you may come to church on Sunday, you still can be find yourself adrift, amen? Drifting away from the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to grab that today, amen? So let's begin this, amen? We get into this Bible study. Make sure you got something to write with. Let's take some notes. We're in a Bible study, a Wednesday night Bible study. Let's grow up in this thing. Let's begin by understanding something that's in the hermeneutics of the text amen in 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 the book of hebrews the book of hebrews i want you to grab your bibles this evening in the book of hebrews chapter one of the book of hebrews amen it does something chapter one connects with chapter two you say well pastor we kind of know the connection but you got to see how it connects that as it brings up this point of drifting, amen? Now watch this. In chapter 1 of the book of Hebrews, there are no commands given to the believer. There's no commands. There's no demands at all given. There's no instructions at all given to the believer in chapter 1 of Hebrews, amen? Open up your Bibles. Look at it, amen? Let's turn to chapter 1 of Hebrews. But I want you to grab this. The introduction in, the, in Hebrews chapter 1 there's no command given to the believer, but in Hebrews chapter 1, there is a final word of God. There's a final word of God in chapter 1. Amen. I want you to see this. The whole chapter, chapter 1, is declaration. The whole chapter, chapter 1, is celebration, get this, of God's final wor word to the world. God has a final word to the world. It's a tongue twister. Final word to the world. Amen. And that is, watch this. This is the final word that God has to the world in chapter 1 of Hebrews. Watch this. That final word is his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the final word. The son of God in chapter 1 of Hebrews is the final word. And God, watch this. God speaks to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Grab this, because this is all is relative. It all connects. He speaks to us through Christ. All that God has to say, rooted Bible, all that God has to say uh, is rooted in Jesus. Everything that God has to say is rooted in his son, Jesus Christ. That's what chapter one is telling us. It's the declaration and celebration of Jesus. Amen. It, it points to Jesus, amen? I want you to understand that. Look at chapter 1 and, and look at chapter 1 of Hebrews. In chapter 1 of Hebrews, let's pick it up around the second verse. It says this, but in these last days, he has spoken to us, talking about God the Father, by his son, talking about Jesus Christ, whom he appointed heir of all things. 
and through whom also, watch this, he made the universe. You better get this because it goes into chapter two. It connects chapter two. It says through Jesus Christ, he's made um, the universe through Christ. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word and after he had provided purification for sins he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven amen no command in chapter one all celebration and declaration it's all the final word um, of God to the world amen so he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs here we go verse five for to which of the, of the angels did God ever say, you're my son, and today I have become your father? Or again, I will, be your, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels, watch the celebration, let all the angels worship him. And speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. The first thing that we want to understand as we look at this, watch this. You got to understand this, is that the declaration here, the sun, the sun in chapter one, he wants us to get the final word that the sun is the creator, the sustainer, the owner, watch this, the ruler, the redeemer of the world. Watch this. He wants us to know that he is the final word of God. Jesus Christ is the final word and he speaks to us now, watch this, through Jesus Christ. He's the final word. He's the sustainer. He is the creator. He's the owner. He is the ruler. He is the redeemer. And chapter one, and in, in, the, in, the, in the Hebrew writer, he wants us to understand this. Amen? That, that Jesus is the final word. For this reason, here we go. In the translation, he says, for this reason, maybe in the King James, in the NIV, he says, therefore, here we go. Whenever there's a therefore or for this reason, it connects us to what he was previously talking about. Amen. Therefore, here we go. Here we go. Comes the command. Now, in chapter two is the command that's given to us. He gives us the declaration, the celebration, the word of God in chapter one. Amen. But in chapter two, watch this. He gives us the command. Therefore, in chapter two. Because God has spoken by his son, we need to do something. Here we go. We need to do something. We need to pay attention, close attention to what his son says. Because of who his son is described in chapter one, he says to you and I, the believer, we need to listen to the son. He's the final word. So chapter two of Hebrew gives us the command and the duty of what we must do. We must listen to what Jesus, the son, has to say. Here we go. This goes to our lesson. Had to connect this. Here we go. So in Hebrews 2, 1, he says this. We must pay the most careful attention. Therefore, connecting with chapter one to what we have heard. Watch this, so that we do not drift away. You got to get this. I want you to get to win Bible study this evening. He says the final word is Jesus Christ, and he speaks to us through his son, Jesus Christ. He is the final word, and watch this. We need to pay attention to what the son has to say, so that, watch this, what we've heard what he has said and what we've seen, who he is, we need to pay attention. We need to stay focused on who he is and what he says. Watch this, the command, so that we do not drift away. Did you get that? The warning about drifting away, that we must pay close attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. He says here that it is exceedingly necessary to keep listening to the sun. You better get this today. Amen. A lot of folks have drift, drifted away because they're no longer listening to the sun. It is so exceedingly necessary that we keep focus on the sun. 
It is exceedingly necessary that we keep considering every day the Son, Jesus Christ. It's so exceedingly necessary that we learn more from him. It is so exceedingly necessary that we keep him in our thoughts, that we stay close to him all the time. Amen? So that what? So that we don't drift away. Mm, mm, mm. You hear what, the, hear what the, the Hebrew writer says? He says that we don't drift away. The attention should be on him. We should be listening to him. We should be focused on him. Amen? We should be connected to him. Our thoughts should be on him so that we do not drift away. I want you to see that. How shall we escape? If you go down to verse 3 of that, he says, uh, 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 for, for how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This is deep teaching here. Amen. How shall we escape drifting away from the faith if we neglect so great a salvation? Did you see that? Connect that. He says this, that the drift begins when we're no longer listening to the sun, when we're no longer focused on the sun. Amen. When we're no longer thinking about the sun, when we're no longer connected to Jesus Christ. Amen. The sun. That's when the drifting takes place in our lives as believers. You better get that today. And that's the question as we look at the danger of drifting. Amen. The danger of drifting. Amen. Watch this. Let's get, let's get a little deeper in this. Let's understand something as we look at this. Watch this. Why would anybody, why would anybody want to start neglecting, amen, start neglecting Jesus Christ? Because that's what he's talking about here neglecting what he described who Jesus is in chapter 1, neglecting who he is, amen, neglecting him, why would anybody want to begin to neglect him? Because once the neglect comes in, that's where the drift is, amen? And so watch this, let's, let's grow from this, let's understand something here. Things that we should know about drifting, let's understand something about drifting and some things that we should know about drifting. The warning here is that we must pay attention to the word of God. Believers, watch this, Rooted. We got to pay attention to the word of God. It, this is the final word. Jesus Christ is the final word. Amen. And we got to pay attention to Jesus Christ. That's all he's saying here. Amen. He is the final word. So we must pay attention to Jesus Christ. Listen, saints, let me illustrate. Drifting requires no effort whatsoever. Drifting requires no effort whatsoever. Amen. To drift means to float. Just to float, amen? By, by no motion, no motion, no life, no effort, uh, just drifting, amen? Just drifting, amen? You, you, what? Dead leaves and, and, and dead branches and dead fish float past a boat that's, that's rowing upstream. What are they doing? They're just floating. And he's saying that you and I, watch this, we got to be careful that we don't just find ourselves floating through this thing called Christianity. We find ourselves adrift, amen? Because watch this, it takes no effort at all to drift. It takes no effort whatsoever to drift, amen? And so watch this. Drifting, brothers and sisters, is an unconscious process. Just like, just like being in a boat that isn't moving or rowing, amen? The undercurrent, which is unnoticeable, will drift you out to sea. Because there's no movement, you just floating, amen? There's nothing going on, there's no energy, there's, there's nothing, there's no working on your part. you just in the boat, and the boat will drift out to sea because of the undercurrent. Well, watch this today. The same is true in the spiritual realm. What the Hebrew writer is showing us is that the same is true in the spiritual realm, amen? Many individual believers, watch this, have slowly drifted away from Christ. You ain't got to receive that. It's the truth. Many have slowly drifted away from Christ. Many churches have gradually gotten away from hearing the truth and have drifted away. Amen. Drifted away, gotten away from God's word. Amen. And now watch this. Uh, some churches and some individual believers are just drifting. They're just drifting. Amen. 
They're just drifting. And that's what the Hebrew writer is saying here. He says that we got to hear what we, we got to listen to what we've heard so that we don't find ourselves drifting. Amen? Watch this. Let's, let's connect this. Let's connect this. Listen, class. Grab this. No one never drifts upstream. No one never drifts upstream. Well, it, it, it takes effort to go upstream. It takes, it takes you and I doing something to go upstream. No one never drift upstream or against the tide. I want you to get these illustrations here, amen? Because somebody needs this today, amen? But if you are swimming against the stream, amen? Swimming against, watch this, is good and real. Swimming against the sin that's trying to come up into your life. Swimming against the worldliness that's trying to take over in your life. Amen. You're swimming, amen. You're going to find yourself not being adrift. Amen. It's when you're not doing nothing at all. It's when you're not doing nothing and you're just floating. Amen. That's where the drift comes in. Amen. And so faithfulness, grab this, faithfulness to the Lord is like oaring upstream, rowing upstream. Amen. That's faithfulness to the Lord. This is what keeps us from going adrift. Amen. It's like rowing upstream. Amen. We must, watch this, grab this, in order for you to row upstream, to be faithful to the Lord, watch this, we must be adding to our faith daily. Watch this. We're talking about growing up stuff. We must be adding to our faith daily daily amen you got to be doing something amen you got to be you got to be listening to the lord jesus christ in his word you got to be focused on the lord jesus christ you got to be wanting to grow up in the lord jesus christ you got to stay connected to the lord jesus christ and that's like rowing upstream and that's like you adding to your faith look what he says in second peter 1 5 we he says for this very reason make every effort make every effort that means you're rowing you're rowing you're doing something. You're not just showing up and rolling out. And No, you're putting forth the effort to what? To add to your faith. Amen? You're adding to your faith. You're, you're not just being dormant. What are you adding? Goodness. And to goodness, to knowledge. And it goes on. It gives you the different attributes of you and I. What's this? Rowing upstream in our faith. Amen? But he also says this. We must be growing up. And this, and Rudy, I want us to grab this. Amen. You shouldn't be the same place you was at five years ago or 10 years ago in your, in your walk with Christ. You shouldn't be the same man or woman that you was 20 years ago. You shouldn't be saying the same things you were saying um, um, last year or five years ago or thinking that you was the way that you was thinking five years ago. You and I should be growing up. We should be growing up. Our response should not be the same way it was when people uh, moved us the wrong way. Amen. Our attitude should not be the same. We should be growing up. He says this in 2 Peter 3.18. He says, but grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Watch this. He's talking about us not, not, watch this. He's talking about us not drifting, but us, watch this, doing something, moving forward, staying focused, listening, listening to the Son of God, following the Son of God, putting forth the effort, amen? The movement, the, the moment you stop adding to your faith, I want you to grab this. I don't care who you are, I don't care what minister you are, deacon or, or congregant you are, the moment you and I, we stop adding to our faith, the moment you and I stop growing spiritually, listen to me, the moment we stop, amen, that means that very moment we're starting to go backwards. The moment you stop growing, that means you're going backwards. The moment you stop adding to your faith these different attributes that God says we should be adding, watch this, I don't care what anybody says, I don't care what your title is, I don't care how long you've been saved, watch this, you are going backwards, amen. We are going downwards, amen, and we begin, watch this, to lose sight of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like being at a drift. After a while, you lose sight of, this, of the shore. After you've been adrift for so long, you don't even see the shore any longer. You've been out there for so long, and you're away from the shore. And that's the same thing. The moment you and I stop growing, we stop staying focused, we stop listening, watch this, we will lose sight. Of Jesus Christ. And that's happening in Christian dome right now. A lot of folks are drifting because they're losing sight 
of the person that the Hebrew writer described where God talks about his son in chapter one. Amen. He says, I now speak through my son. He is the radiance. He is my representation. Amen. He is the creator. He is the sustainer. And you can't lose sight of this. You got to listen to him. Amen. So that you don't what? So that you don't drift. You better get that. You better get that today. Amen. And so we get further and further away when we don't do these things. We get further and further away into the sea of life and away from the things of God. We got some folks that got away from the things of God. Why? Because you've been adrift. Because you're no longer listening to the final word. Because you're no longer focused on the final word. Amen. And they've gotten, we've gotten away. Amen. And so we're out away from the things of God. So watch this. Drifting is a deadly thing. I don't want you to think that, okay, well, I'm drifting and that's all right. Um, that's my business. Uh, you, you mind your business. I mind my business. If I want to drift, then I want to drift. Well, watch this, sweetheart. Drifting is deadly. Drifting is a deadly thing in the Christian's life. Amen. Let me tell you something. Because we can begin to float with other interests. And we can find ourselves floating into other interests. And watch this. We're just floating. We're just drifting into other interests. And we're, watch this, getting away from the faith that's in Jesus Christ. That's dangerous. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's dangerous. And so watch this. Drifting saints become dangerous to others. Let me tell you that again. You better grab this. Write this down. I want you to grab this. Whenever a drifting saint, a drifting saint becomes dangerous to other saints. Amen. Amen. Why? You say, well, you didn't even know that. So a lot of folks are dangerous to other saints. Why? Because they're in a drifting mode. Amen. They're not in a growing mode. They're not in a focus mode. They're not in a connection to Christ mode. It may look like it, but they're drifting and they become dangerous to others. Amen. They become dangerous. Let me give you a, a couple of ways that they become dangerous. Let's go first to this. Uh, drifting parents. Amen. If you got drifting parents, you got some parents that now have lost sight of what their call is for their children, amen? They've lost sight. They caught up in the world and, and all the things of the world. Look what it says here, drifting parents. It says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. A drifting parent will exasperate their child, amen? Instead, bring them up in the training and the instructions in the Lord. Did you get that? Drifting parents no longer make Christ a priority in their child's life. Everything else, the world and everything that the world has to offer is the priority. Amen. The way that they want to be, the way they look, the way they act, the way everything, the world is the priority. And watch this. A drifting parent is no longer bringing their child up in the strong admonition of the Lord. Why? Because they're drifting. They're a drifting parent. Amen. Amen. And so now their child's development in the things of the kingdom is no longer important. Their development in the things of God is no longer important. More or less, they, they weren't about uh, making money and, and being a status and being known, but, but the things of God has, is no longer priority and is put off to the side. Why? Because they are drifting parents. Amen? No longer do they tie the child into the things of the kingdom? Why? Because they're drifting parents. Let's go a little bit further. Even for grown kids, uh, matured kids, uh, uh, grown-up kids, the parent still has a responsibility to still hold them accountable to what is true. Why? Because they're drifting parents. And they don't even want to hold even a grown child accountable to what God says. Even if they don't want to listen to it, they still got to tell them what thus say the Lord. But also, drifting saints are dangerous towards other saints. Watch this. I want you to write this down. I know we're teaching today because you may be in a place of drifting and not know it. You're drifting and you're not aware of it. Drifting saints are, are, are dangerous towards other saints. Amen. Look what it says here in Romans 14, 13. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another because that's what drifting saints do. They always judging stuff. They're always argumentative. They're always looking for stuff to fight at. They become messy. Amen. And, and instead of make up your mind not to put any stumbling blocks or obstacles in the way of a brother or sister. Watch this. Uh, drifting saints put obstacle blocks in other saints way. 
Amen. They become a hindrance. They become a stumbling block. They're, 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 they become, watch this, drifting saints don't show the love of Christ towards one another like they should. They don't show the love of Christ, amen, with other believers like they should. But instead, watch this, they, 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 they are um, 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 hurting other believers. Why? Because they're in a drifting mode, amen? They're in a drifting mode. Uh, always argument, always got something going, always got stuff happening, amen? And, and becoming a stumbling block to others. But not only that, drifting saints do something else. I'm giving it to you a lot. You can always go back and look at this because this shows forth if one is drifting. Drifting saints hinder kingdom business. Watch this. I don't care how long you've been in church. If you're drifting, if you're a drifting saint, the things of the Lord is not primary on your mind. The ministry is no longer your primary focus. God being exalted by way of his church is no longer on the forefront of your thoughts. So a, 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 a drifting saint will hinder kingdom business. Look what Jesus turned and said to Peter. He says, get behind me, Satan. Jesus got friends telling him what's going to take place, how the kingdom was going to advance. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail. He just got friends telling Peter some great kingdom stuff. And Peter's mind is on worldly stuff, human stuff, self stuff. Amen. And, and he says, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You not, do not have in mind the concerns of God. No, no. Why? Because you're drifting. You focus on your own concerns. You focus on your own stuff, amen? But merely human concerns. See, see, drifting saints hinder kingdom business. Don't stop kingdom business, but they'll hinder kingdom business. Not only that, it says here in 2 Corinthians 6.3, we put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Drifting saints are messy, difficult, not focus on God's agenda, but only on their own. And ministry, watch this, ministry is, is stifled. Ministry is held up. Ministry can't be effective like it should be. Why? Because of a drifting saint. Amen? Watch this. Drifting saints have a potential of also doing something else. We're going to get to a solution in a minute, but you got to see this. Because the question is, are you drifting? Focus off of Christ. No longer listen to Christ, amen? He's no longer on the forefront of your mind. You may be in a drifting mode. Drifting saints have potential of leading others astray. We see it all the time in our local churches, how people are led astray by other folks. But these are drifting saints that will potentially, they have the potential of leading others away from church, from the things of God, from holiness. Look what it says. It says, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Watch this. Drifting saints, because they, they are adrift, can cause others to go adrift. You better get this today. They can cause others to go adrift and, and to stray away. Amen. The key here is, is, is listening to Jesus. That's the key. That's what he says in Hebrews. He says, you got to listen to what you've already heard. You got to listen so that you don't what? Go, that you don't go adrift, that you don't drift away. So the key is listening to Jesus and focusing on Jesus and growing up in Jesus and staying connected because watch this. He is the final word. Everything is summed up in him. Amen. But then finally, watch this. I want you to get this and understand this. A boat that is adrift will eventually do something. Um, um, a boat that's adrift, it's not, it's not powering in the water. It's not rowing in the water. It's not moving in the water. It's just floating. It's adrift. In the water, a boat that's just adrift will eventually crash on the rocks. It becomes shipwrecked. You better get this today because the, the challenge is the danger of drifting. Drifting ends in a shipwrecked life. And I don't know about you, man. That's some crazy, this is some, this is some dangerous stuff. This is real stuff. A shipwrecked life, a, a, a life that's fallen on the rocks. A life that has not met its potential in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a shipwreck life due to what? To drifting. 
Amen. Look what he says here in 1 Timothy. He says, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies, in keeping with the word. What did he just say in Hebrews? He says, listen to what you've already, listen to Jesus, listen to what you have already heard. Amen. In keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by recalling them, you, you may fight the battle well, holding on to the faith and a good conscience which some have rejected and so have suffered shipwreck with regards to their faith. Among them are Herminius and Alexander. Watch this. Two brothers, watch this. To be spiritually, uh, spiritually to drift comes with consequences. It comes with consequences. He says here, it may not be no recovery. You might say, well, I, I'm a drift, and it may not be no recovery. All the consequences are, are something that's, that's severe, amen? Look at Herminius and Alexander drifting away, amen? Drifting away from our relationship with Jesus, amen? The one that we talked about that the Hebrew writer was talking about in chapter 1 of Hebrews, amen, is serious. It's serious to, 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 to drift away from a relationship with the one who's talked about in Hebrews 1, the one who's superior, the one who is the representation of God, the one who is sustainer and creator of heaven and earth, the one who created all things, the one who holds all things. To get away from a relationship with him is a serious thing. Amen? And it comes with something. Look at, look at them brothers. And it says, whom I have handed over. I handed these guys over. They shipwrecked their faith. I've handed them over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. See, there's consequences with a shipwrecked faith. So Pastor Webb said all of that to set you up with this. Here we go. Amen? Let's do some intro inspection. Amen. We're looking at drifting, the dangers of drifting. And we're in the latter days, and I'm, I'm here to tell you, uh, a lot of folks are starting to drift. A lot of folks are getting away from Christ, getting away from Jesus. Get, mate, mate like religion. Uh, you might even like church, but we're getting away from Jesus. We're getting away from the final word. Amen. We're getting away from the power source. Amen. We're getting away from listening to him. And that's where we can prevent ourselves from drifting. Amen. So the question on the floor is, are you drifting? Are you drifting? You might say, I don't know. Well, let me give you, let me give you some common signs of drifting. You said, but you just gave us some common signs. No, I just told you some of what produces some of the byproduct of drifting. But let me give you some common signs. For you and I both. For me, the preacher, amen, and, and for you, amen. We need common signs of drifting. This is a common sign of drifting class. Real quick, don't get tired on me. Write this down because this is important, the dangers of drifting, amen. Uh, no urgent desire to study God's word. You don't want to study God's word. You don't want to read God's word no more. It's not exciting to you. You don't want to hear what the Lord has to say. You don't want to build into your relationship. You don't want to have a constant diet of reading the word, no desire to follow it. Amen. All these things you have. You, the last time you picked up your word was last Sunday. You can go all week and week and week without talking to the Lord. Watch this. If that is the case, it's a common sign that you are drifting. It's a common sign that you're drifting. Amen. I put a scripture up there. You can read it for yourself. Amen. No longer does an appetite for the word. You no longer want to hear it. Now watch this. And for the preachers, watch this. If you're just reading your Bible to get a message, if you're just reading your Bible just to get a, a message for Sunday, then guess what? You are drift. Because guess what? It's about a relationship. It's not about grabbing messages out of the Bible. It's about you reading so you can develop your relationship. Amen? Because if you just grabbing messages, reading the Bible, grabbing message, then you probably are adrift. Amen? No longer do you have a desire to study God's word. We got a lot of folks that don't even read the Bible at all. Don't even pick up the Bible. Amen? Might pop up in church, but guess what? That's a great sign that you're adrift. Secondly, a common sign of drifting. No urgent desire to want to talk to the Lord. Don't even want to talk to the Lord. Amen. Look what the Bible says. Then Jesus told his disciples in Luke 18, 1, Jesus told the disciples a parable to show them they should always pray. Man, we're children of God. That's a, he's, we cry out, Abba, Father. We talk to the Lord. Amen. We should always pray and watch this and not give up. Look what Jesus says. 
You stop talking to God on a regular, amen, you just talk to him. Sometimes we just want to talk to him when things ain't good and, and for help, amen. Uh, 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 when we are going through hard times, we just want to call on him and then talk to him. Uh, that's a great sign that we are drifting. Anytime we don't want to talk to the Lord on the regular, you don't want to have a conversation with him. You don't want to share your thoughts with him. You don't want to ask him to, 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 to lead and guide you. You don't want to go intimate with him and ask him to change your heart and your mind. Guess what? It's a possibility that you may be adrift. Anytime you don't want to talk to the one who saved you, delivered you, redeemed you, keeps you, amen, provides for you, amen, makes a way for you, keep the devil off your back, then guess what? There's a great sign here that you may be adrift, that we may be drifting. But then there's another common sign of drifting. No urgent, no urgent desire to be with God's people. You don't even want to be with God's people. You're not even thinking about God's people. You don't, you know, look what the psalmist says. He says in Psalms 122 verse 1, he says, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. He says, it was glad when they said, let us go down to the house of the Lord. Man, you get no rejoicing out of worship. Worship is, 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 is torture to you. You don't even think about worship. You don't even want to be around the people of God when it's time to worship. You no longer enjoy rejoice in the fellowship of worshiping the true and living God with other believers. Amen? You don't want to celebrate with other believers. You don't even want to attend church on a regular basis. You don't want to attend church functions. Amen? Amen? You don't want to be where the believers are. Amen? The believers, we are the church. You don't want to be where the believers are. But you rather hang with the unsaved more so than the saved. It's a great possibility that you are adrift. That you are drifting, amen? That no longer is there a desire to be where God's people, to build the God's people. Let me add to that. Uh, you don't want to edify God's people. You don't want to build into the lives of other saints, amen? That's what he says here in Romans 14, 19. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual, watch this, of edification. It's just not about you, boo. It's not about you. I get so tired of people always talking about themselves. What about other folks? And you edifying other folks. It may be that you are adrift. Amen? Or, or, or watch this in Hebrews 3.13. But encourage one another daily. As long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin. He says this. He says, if you don't no longer want to encourage people, people are going through. You're not the only one going through. You're not the only one that got situations. There's other people that got situations. God says, I put a word in your mouth. I put a word in your mouth to encourage and to edify and to build up. But if that's no longer a desire for you, watch this. You probably are adrift. And then we see a common sign of drifting is this. The increasing desire for the things of the world, amen, that the things of the world take precedent, amen, over the things of God, that now the things of the world is first and foremost, amen, and you can read the scripture for yourself in 1 John um, 2, 15 and 17, that we have a greater thrill, watch this, there's a greater thrill for worldly honor, we see, I see more award shows that I ain't never seen before, everybody got to know, everybody want to put somebody on the pedestal and award and pat each other on the back, we looking for worldly honors, worldly pleasures, Worldly activity, the things of spirituality in the kingdom of God, watch this, take a back seat. Amen. It takes a back seat to all the worldly stuff. And we're more inclined to, to, to hold on to the worldly stuff and we put the spiritual stuff in the back. That means we are drifting. We're drifting. I'm just giving you a few things. Let me give you one last one. A common sign of drifting, no urgent. This is key. You better get this. Amen. I don't care about the time because we need to grow because we got to make sure that we're not adrift because it's dangerous. How should we neglect so great a salvation? How should we neglect so great a salvation? That's what he says here. How should we neglect it? Amen. Watch this. The common sign of drifting, no urgent desire to want to see people saved. We don't even want to see people pulled out of darkness. We want to see nobody, names written in the land's book of life. We don't concern ourselves with that. We might want to get our praise on or we might want to do our ministry, but we don't care about people getting saved. Amen? 
We don't care. And look what it says in Acts 8, 4. Those who have been scattered preached the word wherever they went. And then in 1 Thessalonians, it talks about the Thessalonians. The Lord's message rang out from not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has been known everywhere. Why? Because they're sharing the good news. People know, watch this, not, they're interested, uh, they have a desire, amen, they want to get the gospel out. There is no desire to get out God's word. We don't even want to share God's word or, or proclaim God's word, amen. No desire to want to see people saved and delivered, amen, that should be on the forefront. And if that's not the case in your life or in my life, then it's a possibility that we are drifting, drifting. I just gave you a few things. Drifting. I want you to look at that. It's for you and I to look at. I'm looking at it. Amen. When I put this lesson together, the reason I got it because I had to examine my own. You said, well, you're a pastor. No, pastors drift. Ministers drift. Deacons drift. Uh, uh, ministry leaders drift. Uh, folks in church drift. It happens. Amen. We're all prone to wonder. And so we got to look at this. And that's the question. Are we drifting? Now watch this. As we come down to the close, the major remedy. I want you to get this. I don't want to leave you just bleeding. We got to bring some healing. We got to bring uh, the bomb in, the bomb, uh, the bomb in Gilead. Amen, Jesus. Amen. The 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 major remedy in the text. Remember this as we come to the last portion. You got to remember what he said in Hebrews 2.1. Remember when he gave us the celebration and the declaration and the final word. And then he says uh, the command in 2.1, the command connected all. This Bible study connected all. He says pay close attention to what you've heard. That's the, that's the remedy. Pay close attention to what you heard. What Jesus says. Stay focused on him. Stay focused on Christ. Stay connected to him. Fix your heart on him. Amen. That's what the Hebrew writer is saying. And then you won't find yourself drifting. So four remedies against drifting. Real quick, write it down. Let's write it down. I want you to share this with somebody. The first thing that you and I must do so we don't drift, we got to keep rowing. You got to keep rowing, baby. You got to keep rowing. You can't just sit around, not do nothing. You're going to go afloat. You got to keep rowing. Look what he says. Go back. He says, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. You got to do something. You got to add to your faith. What goodness and to goodness, knowledge and to knowledge, self-control and to self-control, perseverance, perseverance, godliness and to godliness, mutual affection. He says, watch this in verse 8, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective. They will keep you from drifting, unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Look what he says here. And, and I like the key. Look what he says in, in 2 Peter 1.10. If you add on to that, he says, therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort. Keep rowing. Keep rowing, saint. Keep adding. Keep growing. Make every effort to confirm your call and election, for if you do these things, watch this, listen to promise, you'll never stumble. You'll never drift. You'll never stumble. Did you get that? That's, that's a kingdom promise right there. Did you get that? Second Peter, did you get that? Second thing, you got to keep rowing. Amen. Don't give up. You keep rowing. You keep rowing against sin and worldliness and yourself and, and all these things going. You keep rowing. But secondly, watch out for the undercurrents. Watch out for the undercurrents. Watch out for that sin that you like, that sin that you love, that sin that you embrace, that sin that you make excuses for. Watch out for the undercurrents, for the world, the world's philosophy of life. You watch out for that. Amen. It says, dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage against your soul. You watch out for the undercurrents of life that's trying to take you down. That's trying to take you away from the things of God. Amen. That's trying to hinder your, your, your fellowship with Christ. You, you watch out for the undercurrents. This is how you keep yourself from going adrift. Amen. You learn how to repent. You learn how to call to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry. You stop being so prideful and, and, and egotistical and arrogant and learn how to say to the Lord, Lord, it's me. I stand in the need of prayer. Help me, Lord, so that you don't get swept away by the undercurrent. That sinful desire that's trying to take you and I over. Amen. Get that. But then thirdly, this is some teaching today. This is some good stuff. Because you could be adrift and not know it. You could be going away and away and away from God, the faith, and all kinds of stuff, and you not know it. Amen. But thirdly, 
go against the tide. You got to go against the tide. When, you, when you're in that water and that undercurrent, you got to swim. You got to swim against the tide. You, you got to swim it. Amen? See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow, deceptive philosophy that depends on tradition, elementary, spiritual forces. You got to go against what the world is saying. Christians, we got Christians now that are, 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 um, um, are caught up and they're drifting and they're caught up. They're, we got Christians uh, 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 agreeing to abortion because they're going by what the world said. They're, they're agreeing to same-sex marriage in the church. They're agreeing to it, amen? They're, they're cozying up to transgender. They're cozying up to this LGBTQ and now they and added two more IA on it, amen? We're, we're cozying up to what the world is saying. We're, going, we're not going against the tide. We're not going against what God says, amen? We're getting caught up in hollow, deceptive philosophies of this world because we, wanna, we want the world to like us. We want the world to, to embrace us. Don't you know we're not of this world? Amen? And so we got to go against popularity and we got to go against peer pressure and we got to go against compromise and the praise of people and modernism and humanism and we got to go against false doctrines and we got to stand on truth no matter what the world says. No matter what the world says, we got to stand on truth. Amen? And we have to, even though it may uh, uh, appear to be right, is it biblically right? What does the Bible says? So we got to stand against the tide. This is how we don't fall prey to drifting. But then fourthly, as I close, watch this. The fourth thing, you must have strong anchorage. You got to be anchored. You better listen to me, Rooted Bible Fellowship Church. Amen. We must be rooted in Christ. That's, that's, our, that's our theme for this church. We are built on this. We're built on this right here. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 is our, is our theme verse. That's our church is built on this. Amen. So then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue, continue to do what? You don't give up. I don't care what people say. And you running after people and listen to people. You continue to live your lives in him. You live your life in him. What? Rooted. There's our church rooted. Built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught. He says, remember the, the Hebrew writer says, he says this. He says, he says, remember, he says, pay attention, careful attention to what you have heard so that you don't drift away. Amen. Remember what you were taught when it comes down to Jesus. I ain't talking about polity. I ain't talking about denomination. No, what you have been taught about Jesus, that he's the son of God. Amen. That he is the word, that he's creator, that he is the radiance, that he's a representative of, of God, that he is, is over all things and all things were made for him and by him and nothing was made apart from him. You hold on to what you've heard. Amen. So that you don't go adrift. Amen. You stay anchored. Amen. In truth. As we close, you stay anchored in truth so that you don't drift. You stay anchored in unshakable hope so that you don't drift, amen? You stay anchored in the hope of what, what Jesus says. He says, he says, I go prepare a place for you, and where I am, you're going to also be, amen? In my Father's house are many mansions, amen? I go prepare a place. You stay anchored in unshape, in unshakable hope. You stay anchored in the love of Christ, amen? Because he first loved us, amen? We are to love one another. You stay anchored in this, and I tell you right now, if you do these things, you will not drift. These are the spiritual remedies against drifting. I know we took a little bit of time, but the, the danger of drifting is real. The danger of drifting is real because guess what? There may not be no recovery. There may not be no recovery. And one thing about a true believer, watch this. A true believer can drift, but so long. A true believer can, can drift, but so long. Amen? Watch this. And so these are the spiritual remedies against drifting because we're all prone to one that watch this as we close. Check your heart. Check your heart through this teaching. Check your heart. Make sure, brothers and sisters, as I'm going to make sure, I'm going to check my own heart. Make sure that you're not drifting. Make sure you're not drifting. Amen. So don't look at nobody else. Don't think about nobody else. Somebody in the church, somebody in your family. You make sure you're not drifting. The danger is real. Our salvation in Jesus Christ is great. It is just 
is too great to, to neglect. It's too great to neglect, and that's what he is saying. It's too great for us to neglect Jesus. It's too great of a salvation that we have. So the question is, are you drifting? And if you are, get back. Get back. Get back to rowing. Get back to, to, to doing. Get back to focusing. Get back to listening to the Lord Jesus Christ. Get back to the things of the Lord. May God bless you. And may heaven richly smile upon you. Maybe one here this evening that stands in the need. You say, uh, yeah, I'm drifting, but my drift is no anchor at all. Amen. And I'm, and I'm far from the peaceful shore because I've never truly in my heart accepted this Jesus, this, this son of God as my personal savior. I've never truly repented of my sin and asked him to come into my heart to forgive me of all my sin and be Lord of my life. Well, today, watch this. It can stop today. And you could be anchored in him today. You could be rooted in him today. You could be placed into the family of God today. Call upon the name of the Lord, and thou shalt be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. But today, you can say, Lord, save me. And if that's you, if you're home, on, on the TV, and you're saying, Lord, right where you are, say, Lord, save me. Be Lord of my life. And from that very moment, by faith, believe it, by faith, God comes into your heart. And he right now will make you a brand new creation. And if that's you, call that number on the screen. Let somebody know. Call that number and let somebody know that you've given your life to Jesus Christ. Well, rooted. let's get ready for um, Sunday. It was a great lesson. It's good to be in Bible study. Every once in a while, Bible, Bible study might run a little bit longer, but we need this word. We need this. Amen. We're in a lot of days, and we see all the stuff escalating, but the child of God should be standing strong in Jesus Christ. You keep your eyes on Christ. You keep listening to him. Amen. And I guarantee you, you will never drift. May God bless you and may heaven richly smile upon you. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Let's be on time. Let's, let's worship together in the beauty of holiness. Be blessed.